So we've got our Defender stripped. You can see, it's basically a tin can. Everywhere is flat and tinny. So we're gonna start with the roof. We're gonna to work top down. Now we've got our stage one, 1 1.8 square meters, which is gonna give us 12 tiles. That's gonna work out well, but this one pack will cover that roof skin. So we've covered the roof, and you can see areas like this where we haven't got coverage on it. Keep in mind this is a convex shape, which means it's got a lot of tension in it. It doesn't resonate. But if you've got any areas down here, I'll tap on this. And as a flat panel that's an open area, you can hear that it's got panel resonance. So what we'll do with just a couple of the offcuts we've got left over is just put a couple of patches in there. You can tap around and look for other areas. Up here it's not as bad because there's not much opening between that panel. This has got a top hat section spot welded to it. So once again, treat it like a heat map. This is the sweet spot really in here. Make sure you get a patch on there. After we've cut out our sheets, we're gonna dampen these panels through here. You can see this structure here, you tap on it. It doesn't have much panel resonance. So opposed to getting your damping sheet and trying to laminate the whole thing, I'm gonna choose areas, more so the outer skin, where there is resonance, than worrying about covering up all these things. Something you do need to be mindful of is packaging. So when you take a panel off, have a look at what clearance it's got to work out if I stack material on there, is there a datum point or a hard point that that needs to connect back onto? Are you gonna have issues with the thickness pushing the panel out? There's years of dust and grease and grime down here. To make the damping mat stick, we effectively need to clean this. Now you wanna use a white base spirit, so your metho, your metho acetone, uh, wax and grease remover. What I've got here is two products. One is just a pressure packed version of a wax and grease remover. And the other one here is a product by Upol, which is an anti-static panel wipe. It's basically a water-based wax and grease remover. The good thing with this one is that it atomizes over a large space. So we can pretty much drown this, wipe it all out. And then in the final clean, I'm just gonna use the solvent based one just to wipe it all down before we stick it on. So I'll show you how we use this. So you can see with the U-Pole product, we can cover the whole surface. I can let it soak. I'm gonna get a paintbrush now because there's so much shapes and crevices here and brush over this and basically flood it down then wipe it out. I'll so you can see with the water-based version, the fact that it doesn't have solvents that are harsh, you can load this thing up. There's a lot in a bottle, it goes a long way. So if you were doing the back of your ute tray or your pickup truck bed, you can spray the whole thing out. We'll do the same thing with this floor in here where we'll basically flood it, wipe it out let it all dry, and then just before we go to put our dampening sheets on, I'm gonna go in with the solvent based one and just wipe out those areas so they're clean. So we've wiped it down with our water based cleaner, which has allowed us to clean the bulk of the grease off. Now I'm gonna use our solvent based one, and you can see here, I'm gonna target this area here, this area here, get some in there. We'll probably try and get a, a patch in there or whatever we can feed in there. Here's not too bad but we'll wipe it all down with this. So you'll see this will just clean off the rest of the grease and grime that's there. Now you're ready to apply your sound deadener. So you can see we've done our stage one sound deadener on the roof and that's covered the bulk of it. A couple of areas up on the corner where those safari windows are, which we haven't put material deliberately. There's a lot of, I guess, surface tensioning there. You tap on them and they don't have panel resonance. We've used some offcuts in those back flat panel areas. Now, this is ready for our stage two, our insulator. layer. But what we're gonna do here is do our floor, which typically we cover this first so we don't stand all over this, but we're gonna do the floor to show you the entire area of the vehicle that we do with this stage one. So on the floor, we've done a tile layout to work out where we're gonna position the mats. Rather than get in and just start sticking them in everywhere and then go, oh look, I've pulled up short up here. What you're best to do is work out the areas of concern. So treat it like a heat map. Here in this big flat floor cargo area and these rear wheel arches, 
we've concentrated on them. We've laid all the tiles out, they're not stuck down yet. And then we've done that up the front here. Something to consider in this vehicle is we're not pulling the dash out. It's also fitted with an air con unit, which is a bit complex and makes it hard to not only sit in, because there's not much foot room, but it's also hard to get up under those areas. If you're doing a restoration build, you've got access to that whole firewall area that you're gonna get much better results because you can blanket all that out and cover it all up. So what it's gonna mean in this vehicle is we're gonna end up with some excess material, which is good, because we're gonna be able to cover a few other areas like this B pillar area here and anything else that you see that is a concern. So up here in the front, you can see what we've done is considered how these battery hatch areas are gonna work. And we don't wanna go under and clamp these. Here there's a series of rivets, which that's got a reinforcement underneath. So you tap on that, it's solid. In between where it doesn't have it, we've stuck a patch, a patch on the front of this area. So you'll do that tile layout first, like we've done here. We've cut everything to, to size. We've doubled it up. We've just applied those pieces so you can see where we're gonna put them. Don't be concerned that you've gotta cover 100% of all this. We've got a product, our mass loaded vinyl, that we're gonna put a blanket over this as a sound barrier that's gonna stop noise coming up. So this is purely dampening. It's gonna take out the panel resonance. As you can see, it's done that, as opposed to over here, we tap on this. And it's a lot more solid. So now that we've got all our stage one sound deadener installed, we've got our six mil insulator, which is a peel and stick closed cell foam. So this is designed to stick directly to the roof skin. Now I've got three sheets here, which are gonna cover the roof skin. We'll potentially have some excess that down that B pillar where your ear sits right next to, we'll skin down there. So what I'm gonna do now is we're just gonna measure those rectangles, pre-cut our sheets, bring them in and then stick them on. So we're actually gonna butt up to all these top hat sections. Now the reason we haven't put dampening sheets on these top hat sections is because, picture this like a drum skin, a heat map as such. In the open areas here is where the dampening issue is. On this top hat section, it's got that much strength in the fold that you're not gonna get any panel resonance. Now we're not gonna go over that too because of packaging. We're gonna get this headliner back in and it clips hardened datums on here. So if we put anything under it, the trimmer is not gonna fit. So we've cut our sheets of insulator to size. Now because we've had our hands all over this, wiped it down, you might have oils, you might have picked up grease. I'm gonna give this a quick spray with Prepsol to clean it down. Because we're working against gravity here and you've got heat and everything, you wanna make sure and be a bit pedantic that you have wiped it down. Next, when we apply it, we're gonna try and roll it out so we don't get any air bubbles. Any air bubbles you're gonna cut a or poke a hole in the foam to feed that area. And we're gonna get an application roller. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna make sure we actually compress the foam enough to get the adhesive to bite in. If you think of this as like, I guess a table with flour on it, if you wipe it, you'll see everywhere where you haven't wiped. We can't see that up here, it's invisible. So you wanna make sure you've compressed the foam everywhere and pushed it on to stick. If you just put it on there and tap around it, it's gonna come down. You gotta make sure you get good contact that it actually bites in and sets itself there. So a little trick that you can do here is, instead of peeling all the back of the paper off, you can see I've just relieved that top edge, which has allowed me to tack it on. I'll continue and take this edge off here and stick this up so I've got a nice line. And then I'm just gonna work the paper out and just work my way across. So you can see we've covered the roof with the insulator, which is a six mil closed cell foam. Now, packaging reasons, we've butted up to these top hat sections and then we've curved out down to the window. 
that's to allow the headliner to fit back in. Now our theory here with this material, it's gonna stop a bit of radiant heat coming through and also your inbound sound of you talking on the phone or you're playing music, having conversation, the sound waves are going through the headliner, the foam's gonna soften the surface, which in effect will reduce the amount of reverberation coming back down, quieten the vehicle down. So we've got our stage one sound deadener down in the rear floor area and on the rear arches. Now we've got our stage two products, which are gonna work as our foams and our mass loaded vinyl as a sound blanket. So we've got two options for you here. First is the mass noise liner light, which is a six mil closed cell foam and a two millimeter mass loaded vinyl. This is ideal as a drop-in, say rear cargo area. You can use it as a floor underlay. What you need to keep in mind is, you'd still wanna put a protective coating over this. Although the material itself is durable, if you drag tools or things over the face of it, you're gonna leave marks in it. So another option we have is also the floor mat, which is still a mass loaded vinyl with a six mil closed cell foam on it, but it's got a leather look and a black finished face, which makes it durable as a finished floor. So for your boot area, you can just drop it in, job done. Uh, we're gonna use it in this particular vehicle because it doesn't have anything in it. If this was a, had a drawer set up in it, you could choose to go a cheaper option, which is this one, because you're gonna cover over it. You're probably not gonna get the benefit of the finished look face on it. But because this vehicle is gets tools loaded in or uh, camping gear put in the back of it here, this is the one we're gonna go with. So we're gonna do some basic upholstery work here where we cut a rectangle for the floor, upholster the rear arches. So I'll show you how we do that. So with our rear arches in this car, there's a bit of shape in here to allow for this seat configuration, which has that sort of negative step. And there's a couple of obstacles we're gonna work around. So basic patterning. Here's one I've prepared for the left-hand side, which we've just measured out and worked through, marked the back face of the sheet. Now, a couple of tricks with this to get it to flow over surfaces is what we've done here is relief cut the foam. So we've been careful just to cut through the foam and not score the material and then weed that foam out. What that's gonna do is when you fold this 90 degrees, it's not gonna put the foam under, I guess, compression where it wants to roll back out. What you'll find if you try and do it without relief cutting it, it's almost gonna to wanna to be like a lollipop like that and come unstuck. So we're just relieving the tension in there before we put it on and that should sit there forever basically. So what we're gonna use is a high strength spray grade contact adhesive and we're gonna spray up both surfaces straight to the foam, straight to the arches and glue that in there as a permanent finish. So another little tip is where you've got a cutout and like we've got our seatbelt cutout here, you can see a grey face. What you can do is, even if you just get a texture and you colour that in, what it means is any visual angle of it, you won't see that grey face, it'll hide it and it'll disappear, make your job look a lot neater. So here we've got our floor, we've now finished it. We've got our stage one on, and then we've got our floor mat, which you can see, this is cut to size. We've glued it and upholstered it all to the rear arches. Now this is a durable finished fit that you'll be able to chuck your tools in, your camping gear, go away, wipe out, but it also doubles as our sound barrier. So we've got our stage one deadener throughout the floor and the seat boxes here and on the transmission tunnel. Our next stage was to put a mass loaded vinyl in. It's a heavyweight sound blanket as such. Now this version is a two millimeter thick. It weighs four kilograms per square meter. And you can see it's got a material scrim face on the back, which is, allows us to put a glue to it. So we're gonna put it over here as a blanket to try and stop that transmission noise. Now packaging's tight. I would prefer to put a closed cell foam as a decoupling layer under it but the seat rail that fits here and in the rubber floor coating, there's no room. So we're gonna put this straight down. We've got our dampening sheets in key areas. So here I'm just picking up the seat mount points, which you can see it's a nutsert put through. So I've picked the center of the hole, 
like this sheet here, I've got a, a, a punch that I'll punch a nice bigger hole through it. I've kept it tight around this uh, wiring loom here, so we've just done like a keyhole slot. So that grommet, this grommet actually wasn't plugged in, which means you're gonna get noise, heat come up through there. So we've made sure that gro grommet's all tight. And then we've done a keyhole here where that slits in. So that's kept that pretty tight. This has also got a console. So there's another couple of nuts that's here that I need to pick up on. So the easiest way is, I've found those center points. This locates between these two seat mounts. We'll pick up these other nuts. -erts. So we've got the center points of all these holes now. It's basic patterning. We'll take that out, punch these, and bring it back in. So we've got our piece cut with the holes in it now. We can put that in. And you can see it here, it lines up. It's gonna tuck under these panels, which they access the battery box. What we're gonna do is just use our spray grade contact adhesive and actually lightly glue this down so it's stuck down. It'll be still be something that you can peel off later if you need to get through here to service the transmission. So the pressure pack, we spray on both surfaces. Now it's important that you let it tack off, air off, and then it'll grab to itself. So we've only lightly glued this just to tack it down. It's gonna sit there under its own weight. Now this is gonna work as a sound blanket. We're trying to stop that noise coming up through that transmission gearbox area. We'll let that dry, then we'll place it in position. Finally, if this was a passenger vehicle, usually we'd have more room that we can put an underlay, some foam, and then the vinyl on top of it. But the packaging is tight in these military style vehicles where they just have a rubber floor mat that's molded. So we, we're limited in what space we can put in. And we've basically upholstered all these seat boxes with it. We've made a pattern. We've covered it over the transmission tunnel, you can see there. And then the last bit is this sheet that we're gonna drop in here and we're gonna glue down. Now I did mention earlier that ideally to reduce engine noise, you do wanna remove the dash as much as you can and go right up the firewall to that plenum or the lower screen. We're limited in this vehicle because it's got AC, it's got everything in it, time constraints, that we're not gonna be able to get everything out and get up there. However, if you're doing a restoration job, I would recommend that you put as much as you can as a firewall blanket up through there to cover out that noise. Then our factory rubber Land Rover floor mat is gonna sit straight over the top of this. So the wrap on the Defender, we've got it back together. We'll show you where these things are tied. If you have a look in here under the front footwell area, as we lift this up, you can see there's not much room, but we've managed to get our stage one and our mass loaded vinyl and all the trim back in. Now in the rear, you can see there that we've got the floor mat back in it which is now a durable surface, which is original exposed aluminium wheelhouse is a totally covered in the pos and now. So you chuck all your gear in here, your camping gear, your tools, and go off-road or go touring. The other thing is the seats, we didn't put them back in. The owner doesn't use them, but if you wanted to put your seats back in that area, easy drill back through, pick up the bolts, cut some clearance out, and you're ready to go. You can see the headline is back in. Now there's no interference fit with that. The lining, it all fits underneath. And now if we tap on the panels, particularly the roofs are big and flat on these. It's solid. This B-pillar area, which is right near the driver's ear, doesn't have any drumming on it anymore. We also put some foam in there. So all in all, the truck should be much better, much quieter, particularly when touring on corrugated roads.